Hello everybody, I'm CJ Miller. I'm across the, uh, I'm across the Red River from uh, beautiful Bossier City, Louisiana, directly across from it in downtown Shreveport, Louisiana. And stick with me, I'm about to uh, start preparing dinner. Dinner today is gonna be, uh, uh, it's gonna be a uh, ribeye, uh, oven, oven prepared ribeye, but it's going to be uh, paired with a uh, stuffed catfish and you're gonna love this, stick with me. Hang on. So this is one of these uh, kitchen creations that uh, it's not so much following a specific recipe, uh, but it's a recipe that I'm creating just based on some things that I've done in the past. And so basically this is going to be uh, um, the stuffing that I'm going to prepare. It's going to be a cream and cheese stuffing. And uh, just I had this uh, stove top here. And, and had a little bit of just a, some small breadcrumbs that I needed to use and get out of the way. So I just I'm throwing this in uh, in general. Now you can use your own uh, bread, uh, your own toasted bread or whatever. If you're using uh, bread, maybe kind of like toast it and giving give it give it a little bit of croutonness, uh, uh, croutonness. <laughs> uh, cut it up and make like little small croutons or crostinis. Uh, uh, and use that to add your uh, stuffing uh, seasonings and, and things uh, if you're doing that, that at home. But it's really, this is fine for what we're doing. You can use a box kit like this. So hang on and uh, I'm gonna use uh, probably, what is it here? Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna use the package, like a whole package of uh, cream cheese, eight ounce package. Hang on, I'm gonna add that to the bowl. So uh, kind of a soft cream cheese out of the package. You want to let it be kind of at room temperature, the cream cheese. It'll mince a little better. And then I'm going to put in the uh, stuffing mix. This is just a, uh, oh, guess what I'm doing is I'm adding uh, probably about six ounces of uh, boxed stuffing mix. Um, hang on. So here the breadcrumbs are going to fold in quite well. But the stuffing mix, you kind of want to just add it a little bit at a time as you're as you're mashing it together uh, because this will be difficult you want uh you know maybe not doing a video ho ho holding a phone with my hand i need one hand for the bowl one hand for my fork just to like smash this together uh, and when i come back uh, i will have incorporated uh the uh, um the box kit i said six ounces uh, i would have incorporated that a little bit at a time into uh the cream cheese and uh and then we'll see where we're going from there because this is something i'm sort of doing on the fly as we go along but don't worry it's going to be wonderful trust me it occurs to me now that i want the uh i want the breadcrumbs to handle just a little bit better uh I want them a little softer so they'll fold in and they'll handle a little bit better into the, into the cream cheese. I'm not going to do too much fluid. I'm going to take maybe a quarter of a cup of uh, water and pour it into the bowl just to soften these breadcrumbs. And so you can see what's happening as I have gradually added more uh, breadcrumb and more uh, just a little bit more water at a time. Uh, to soften it and then so it's folding in very nicely and what I want to do is I will continue I've got the full box uh, and then a little bit of moisture in here and what I want to do is I just want to continue folding this over uh, for another few minutes and then it's going to be blended very very well uh, into the stuffing and it's going to be really really awesome and then uh, yeah <laughs> uh, you, you're going to love where this is going all right so so here we go and let me tell you uh, you know, adding that little bit of water gradually, just as needed, kind of, uh, it softened that bread and make, made it uh, workable, those breadcrumbs. Uh, if you want to, you can use uh, uh, an oil or something like that. I, I didn't want the, uh, the oily texture. I didn't want uh, any... Uh, I wanted something that was going to mix very well, and sometimes oil, uh, the more oil is in something like this, it will create a, a separation, a breaking, uh, and I didn't want to, I didn't want, uh, I didn't want this uh, mixture to break, 
and have, because there's going to be oil in the fish naturally as it is. And these are uh, catfish fillets. There's going to be a natural uh, uh, oil for that anyway. So, um, yeah, I uh, want to avoid that if I can. And if I need to, I can create uh, a sauce or whatever if I feel like it to go over on top of it. I don't think I will, though, because I'm also going to be having, like I said, this is going to be uh, an aside to the uh, ribeye that I'm going to have uh, tonight also. So, um, yeah. So we're about to start taking the, uh, we're about to start taking the fish and we're going to, I'm going to show you how I'm going to, and the way that I'm going to uh, roll the fish uh, in a little, uh, almost in a little cup around the um, stuffing. Okay. Uh, and, um, Sometimes with something like this, maybe you want to make use of, uh, um, if you need to, you could take a little uh, foil or something and put like a little strip of foil around the fish to hold it in place. You can use a, a um, um, toothpick or something like that. Uh, one of the things that this will not do, it will not do well if it's overstuffed. I have a tendency when I'm doing a stuffed food like a stuffed pork chop or a stuffed steak or something, I have a tendency to overstuff it. I will try not to overstuff it because this will do really well. If I don't use all of this stuffing, it will work really, really well uh, uh, in a couple of days when I want to uh, make another kind of food or something like that. I can pull it out and it, it's going to do really, really well uh, as a uh, breadcrumb uh, herb and cream cheese style stuffing. Uh, it's a very versatile treatment. But hang on. This one is going to be, uh, presentation is going to depend a lot upon this, you know. Uh, or this will actually depend a lot upon presentation, I should say. Sometimes people do this and make this, and then maybe they'll take like a couple of shrimp or uh, or something like that, and they'll put it on top of. I actually don't have shrimp. If I wanted to, if I had crab meat on hand, and I do not, uh, funny story, I actually... Uh, some time ago, like about a month and a half ago, uh, I was out shopping and brought some crab meat home, and it was a canned crab meat, uh, which I don't normally uh, buy anyway. Uh, but as it turns out, it was near the freezer section. I didn't realize that it was a refrigerated can. It was a, a pasteurized, but it was only pa partially pasteurized, and it needed to be refrigerated. Uh, so I wasn't able to use uh, the crab meat. But this is a good this is a good mixture right here. And then what you would do is you would add your uh, crab meat, your lump crab meat to this, and then you can make a uh, crab cake, uh, um, you know, baked crab cakes, or you could uh, fry it. Either way would work well with that. So it's, it's a good starter for that. But hang on, let me uh, let me get some uh, let me get some fish out, and I will show you how I'm going to uh, present this. Sorry, I had uh, stepped in the hallway. You got a glimpse of me away from this. Okay, so anyway. Um, so this is about the size of the fillets that we're going to use. And while I have you here, I'm going to, we're going to take, oh, a good heaping tablespoon, pretty much, whatever. Like I said, I do have a tendency to overstuff these, depending upon how this fish works around this uh, cream cheese stuffing, I'll use less or more. Let me see. What I want to do is I want to wrap this around. I do think that's a little bit too much. What I want to do is I want to wrap this around that filling, and then I want to stand it on end and secure it with the toothpick. Hang on one second. Just at this moment, this is how it works. And so uh, I use the thick end and tuck in the thick end of the filet, and the thinner end, that's a, you know, uh, that's going to move a little easier so that's the part that I'm going to wrap around the outside and then secure it with the toothpick and then I stand it on end uh, and if I need to I'll brace them against each other but I think but I think they're standing just fine and then I'm going to go into an oven at about 400 I may sprinkle on some paprika or something like that uh, whatever we'll see but let me get the rest of these rolled up as you see here this this piece was a little bit smaller, had less of a flap to fold around, so I used two toothpicks to secure it. And, and uh, but this stuffing kind of helps create a base. If you're working with a, a, a group and you know you're going to have maybe some picky eaters, some picky children, or something like that, uh, you could use these uh, 
harder to wrap pieces if you if you wanted to you could use them as just a a, a, a non-stuffed baked catfish or uh, if you want to uh, drop them in some hot oil and fry it uh, for the kitties or something I'd recommend using that one you know if you get a hold of some uh, catfishes catfish <laughs> catfishes some catfish that are cut uh, in a way that that, that doesn't really want to uh, wrap and stand up you know um, yeah just wanted to show that okay so I got one two three four five six seven pieces a filet. Now, obviously, you know that when you're handling raw seafood, really raw meat of any kind, but really just any kind of food in the kitchen, I'm like just constantly go over to the sink and uh, wash your hands. Uh, just every time you change imp uh, implements that you're using, every time you change uh, food that you're going to cut or handle or whatever. So what we want to do is put just a little bit of oil, your choice. I, I just went with the vegetable oil uh, uh, on this foil line. And then I'm going to uh, set a uh, oven to preheat at 400. Uh, when, when I'm going to wait, sometimes I'll put it in first, but I'm going to actually wait until it preheats to 400. And then, uh, and then when it does, uh, preheat up to 400 then I'll put it in the oven and I will go for about 20 minutes that's about how long I would do a baked fillet uh, but because it's stuffed I know that it's going to need more time it's just at that point that's where I'm going to take a, a ribeye fillet and put it in the oven and then tonight I'll have a ribeye fillet uh, with a piece of fish on the side of it, a piece of stuffed catfish on the side of it. And then the rest of this, uh, I will, uh, and, and you know me, I'm hungry tonight. I've not really had a, a, a decent uh, meal today. <laughs> I've had like little snacks and stuff. But uh, for the most part, uh, everything about this meal is, uh, for the most part, uh, keto friendly, with the exception of the stuffing that I'm using uh, and per serving uh, per half a cup and there's probably a half a cup in each one of these there's probably a quarter of a cup uh, depending upon I'm eyeballing uh, so half a cup um, of the um, the stuffing by itself uh, would be uh, 21 grams of carbohydrates now on a keto diet uh, you can have, um, you can have uh, 50 in a day uh, of uh, total carbohydrates, and you minus anything that is uh, on that. You would minus anything in your in your keto plan that is uh, a non-soluble uh, carbohydrate. You know, it's something that doesn't stay in the in the system, but. Uh, uh, just goes through like any kind of carbohydrate that's a fiber or uh, alcohol sugars uh, su not sugar will stay in your system but if it's an alcoholic sugar uh, that does not so anything that that does not absorb into the body uh, for storage for fuel but but uh, uh, actually works towards uh, digestion then you actually do not count those uh, in among your net carbs uh, and so, approximately a dietary uh, fiber in that 21 grams, one gram of it uh, is, uh, you know, is deductible. So per per uh, fish, you get uh, approximately, probably not even as much, but I'm going to go on the upside and say you get like a, a half a cup. So that's 20 grams, uh, 20, 20, and 20. That would put you... Uh, if you ate three of these, it would probably put you, uh, I would say, 10 uh, grams of carbs above your keto limit. So you would want to burn that and eat it, you know, like uh, extra, you know. But anyway, um, hang on one second. Downsides here. Downsides per ounce of this cream cheese, you have two grams so I would say a serving size to stay keto friendly is not three of these, two of them, 20, 20, 
and then one, two, three, four, uh, five, one, two, three, four, five. That's going to put you uh, right at two of these would put you right at 50. And that's an approximation on grams. So that's, that's your carbs for the day. So what I would recommend doing it is, is having, like I'm going to have, have, have this with um, other food that does not include carbohydrate. Uh, so I'm going to have uh, mine with a ribeye. And I'm actually probably just going to have one of these uh, today. And then my car count starts over at midnight. Uh, so honestly, it's uh, later in the evening. So I'll probably go ahead and uh, prepare this uh, and have a little bit now. And then I may, you know, because it's better to eat smaller amounts because it's better for processing food. Uh, it's better... What should I say? How, how do I put this? Um, for burning, for fuel consumption. The body uh, burns fuel more efficiently when it's taken in smaller amounts. So one of these with maybe uh, uh, a half of a half of a uh, ribeye. Uh, and uh, so half of these with, oh, half of one of these ribeyes. Yeah, it's about that amount, you know. And... What's cool about that, what's cool about pairing this with beef is that, you know, some, some, some meats, some leaner meats, if you can get a hold of some leaner meats and reduce the amount of carbs that you're taking in, then the more food that you're taking in, it actually, the body has to burn energy to consume food. So at one point, uh, you cross over and you hit that tip, uh, that tipping point where the more um, the more pork, the more beef, the, 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 the leaner cuts of it that have uh, uh, lesser amounts of fat. Now, this is good fat in fish, but um, so that's okay. But you know, um, this is just a, a treat. Uh, yeah, I needed a good pick me up after the shot. I finally got around to, to doing some shopping. So, yeah, um, all sorts of ways to treat yourself in a fun way. Uh, to, to have a little fun with your food. So I've, I've, I've preheated, so we're going to go into the oven. I was kind of talking, rambling, until I heard that preheating. And my oven preheats, preheats pretty fast. So. Ooh, feel that heat. Okay. Go in here. Watch your fingers. Ah, terrible. I should always handle my, uh, uh, with, with glove, I should always handle my, uh, pots and pans. I, I don't always think about it. It's better to be safe than sorry. And then uh, what I'm going to do is set a timer. And then looking at this, you know, the uh, uh, video uh, will always show me that, hey, I need to really, really come in here and uh, <laughs> clean this stovetop. It's streaky. But yeah, that's too much. Okay. Uh, hopefully this will be clean by the time we come back. Stick with me. See you in about 20 minutes. For you, it'll be uh, just a, a second or so. Oh, I forgot something that I want to do. So I take it back out. It's fixing to go back in. This old bay seasoning. I love it. So zero carbs. And this is good. It, it tastes to me like a really good, uh, really good, um, uh, a good seasoning on anything. You can do st steamed shrimp. Uh, which I can't. I'm allergic to shrimp. Otherwise, I would get some prawns and put over the top of this. Um, but a hot crab dip uh, or, you know, basically a crab cake. Uh, I would add some of this to uh, the to, to crab cake. But anyway, what I'm going to do is uh, basically just uh, sprinkle some of this down on here. I love a good heavy seasoning. You might could go lighter on yours. Um, it's really going to be okay because it's really just on the one side of it. And then as you cut it and you bite into it, these flavors are going to dilute upon your tongue. So now we're going back into the oven. Okay, so here, uh, and I decided to go ahead and just do uh, these ribeyes because uh, the way that I, the way I eat, and it's it's later in the evening right now. What I can do is I can have uh, uh, one of the pieces of fish and half of one of these ribeyes 
for my dinner uh, after midnight. And it's really good. If I want to, I could snack a little bit more and have like uh, the remainder of one of these steaks and then uh, another one of those small fish or whatever. Because uh, it's, you know, after midnight. And then that would, uh, you know, be time for me to go to sleep after that. Then uh, for breakfast, if I wanted to have uh, uh, a piece of uh, steak with some, with some fish, I could. Uh, and so this is going to get through uh, four pieces of fish, the, these ribeyes. One half ribeye and one of the fish is the serving on this. I'm going to do these probably to about medium. Uh, what's soaking on here is just a marinade of Worcestershire sauce. Uh, <laughs> uh, and don't make fun of the way I say that if I'm not saying it right. Worcestershire, Worcestershire. I don't know. I pronounce it shire. But, you know. Whatever. So anyway, you know what I mean. Nothing spectacular about it. Uh, per serving, one gram. And it's actually going to be a marinade, and I'm not actually going to put it on top of the steak once it's done. I'm going to let it sit here for about uh, uh, five or six minutes, flip it over, let it soak on uh, the other side. A uh, good five or six minutes, the, uh, you know, marinade. By that time, my uh, timer with the oven will be signaling that it's time for me to work with that uh, catfish. And I'll take it out, check it out, make sure everything is going well. And then if I need to, uh, and I know, I'm sure because of the stuffing, I really will need to be able to put this, uh, that fish back into the oven. But I can put it back into the oven for the duration of time that it takes this steak at a, at a baking of 400 to come up to a, a medium temperature. And you just kind of have to feel it. You need to know your own oven, how it works or whatever. Uh, but like I said, this would be really fun. This is a good thing to do. You could do this at home serving uh, friends. You could have the fish course first. Uh, break it up with a palate cleanser. Then serve a, a, a steak and then potato if you want to go formal, form, formal with it. So you would do fish maybe. And then like maybe like some Brussels sprouts or asparagus or some sort of like green vegetable. Then you could do steak. Uh, or if you wanted to do like a small salad, like an endive salad in between courses, uh, you could do that. I, I normally don't like uh, in between courses. You could do, uh, I don't know, like a like a soft sorbet to cleanse the palate from the fish, uh, and then and then serve a second course of uh, the steak with a potato. So do the fish with the vegetable and then the steak with the potato. That's the way I would do it. And then a two course and then you would have a a, a, a salad. If you didn't if you didn't have a salad throughout the meal, so you would have a salad course after that. Just that just for a, a small, just picking around. I think I think salads are better uh, if you're doing you know an entertaining kind of thing. Uh, maybe have like a people come in and have them pick around on some finger food, then serve a fish course, a uh, small palate cleanser, uh, then serve the meat course. Uh, you know, uh, if you're serving libations or whatever, that's fine. I don't drink alcohol, so I don't serve uh, wine to the guests uh, or anything like that. If they were ever going to come over, they would need to bring their own. And if they got stupid, they'd have to get the hell out because I can't put up with the you know, <laughs> drunkenness. And so, but yeah, <laughs> that's, that's ends my hospitality. But then what I would do, I'm just going to run it through without all the ad living. Okay. Uh, finger foods, hors d'oeuvres, amuse-bouge, whatever, uh, blah, blah, blah. When people sit down for the sit down course, fish course, a uh, fish vegetable, uh, small sorbet palate cleanser. And then, um, we would have the uh, ribeye and uh, potato, of course. Then after that, we would have a salad, uh, very very small salad. You don't need a big, huge restaurant type salad. You need a small salad. And then after that, and that's just to uh, basically make sure that that uh, all the all the requirements are met uh, for the meal to be tasty, but also to be nutritious. And then we get. Uh, a dessert. Now I'm fond of chocolate desserts uh, and creams and stuff like that. So it's going to be some sort of uh, 
uh, blah blah blah. And then after that, if if uh, people were still hanging around or something like that, then maybe I could set out. Uh, and this is of course if if this your event's going on into the evening, then you could after a while you break out uh, a charcuterie, you know, uh, some cheeses. Uh, with uh, a lot of meat. It's not a true charcuterie unless there's meat, uh, like a, a salami, summer sausage, uh, uh, some ham, you know, or, or whatever, you know, uh, whatever, little small bits of uh, meat and everything like that that are, that are almost like finger foods or whatever. That's your, your charcuterie if you're going to go on that route. And you could add, add some cheeses with it, maybe some fruits and stuff, but you only do that if your dinner has turned into a party that's kind of kind of kind of go uh, later into the evening or whatever. So anyway, uh, <laughs> most of the people that that I know are are uh, you know have busy lives and really can only get together for dinner. And we can't really do like a full on course evening, like a big evening of a meal or whatever, where the meal itself is a big part of the entertainment. Uh, people just don't uh, do that too much uh, these days. Especially since they have to get home and they have to get their stuff together for whatever their plans are for their next day. Um, but yeah, and even in this case, I'm just going to combine the fish and the steak. One of those, one of those fish and uh, steak. And uh, I don't do a lot of uh, vegetables, uh, and certainly don't do carb side dishes like potatoes and stuff. Uh, at home if I can. And I want to go a little bit more heart smart with it. This is a little bit of a decadent way that I can sort of get my mind back into being uh, a little bit more towards that keto, uh, ketogenic uh, intent, especially to be in support of my sister who is also going to need to uh, do some more uh, heart smart dieting. She's been pretty good though. But yeah. Oh, by the way, those, if I, if I mentioned it, yeah, she just had um, uh, a bypass surgery. Uh, her recovery is doing well. Prognosis looks good. Uh, you know, when you do something like that, it's a it's a slower um, recovery than, a, than, say, getting your tonsils out or something like that. So, you know, but yeah, it, um, all, all in all, uh, things are well. And um, I'll be back with a finished plate. Uh, you know, we'll see what's up. We'll taste it. I've had it before, this uh, fish, so I know what's up. Hi there. So it has been 20 minutes, and I have taken these out just for a moment. Now I want to show you, if you're going to do this for company, make a couple of extra. Um, this is okay once those toothpicks come out. But a, but, a, but this kind of, uh, I guess it was a little bit, a little bit more. I was just trying to get the... Uh, stuffing you so I could use uh, so I wouldn't waste it uh, I could have done with putting less in here and I would have been able to fold a little bit it's still holding together but really what you want to do with this really honestly you want to make a few of these extra in case there's a couple of them that come out uh, a little bit questioning uh, a little bit looking a little bit questionable ideally you want them to stand like this so I'm not worried about how it looks. This is just me. But this one here, if I had uh, just in a company, uh, I maybe would not serve that one. And maybe that's about the only one I maybe, maybe that one. If I did, I would have to, to uh, prop this right up against uh, the edge of the plate or the, uh, the beef or something like that to sort of disguise it. But really what you want is you want something to look really, really round. So what I would do in the future, maybe if I could, and you, you want to don't have them too on top of each other. It's okay if they gradually touch or something, but uh, as this bread expanded, that's, that's what happened there. Uh, it kind of pulled away from the fish or whatever. So, uh, yeah. But you get what I'm going at, right? Uh, when they're done really, really well, they do, they look really, really well. And then you can like lay your uh, crab cake or your uh, shrimp or something on top of this. Uh, I'm going to put this back in the oven while I do this, these ribeyes and these ribeyes are going to go for about four to five minutes on each side. I should get a good medium going on there and a uh, uh, soft texture baked, not um, baked uh, 
not broiled in this case. So, do you see what's happening here? It's time for me to, hold on. I just time for me to flip these and then just ribeye steak and put them back into the oven. We are getting a prime rib, prime rib type slots. Uh, of me, and this is wonderful. Forgive me as I'm trying to flip this over and talk and hold a phone. I have no production value, no production team, but I'll tell you what, I do know how to put together a pretty decent meal. All right, so what I want to loosen this up a little bit and give it a flip. Uh, another three or four minutes, we're going to have a good uh, medium, maybe slightly medium rare, but honestly what's going to happen is that as this sits and, and waits for me to eat it, because I'm not going to eat it right away because I can never eat right away. Uh, as it sits, it's going to cook a little bit more. And if it's a little bit more rare than I really want, it's really going to be okay because uh, in sitting and waiting for me to come to it, it's going to continue to cook. That being said, I'm going to set the timer. And I set it for uh, about five minutes. Uh, so I'm going to do that this time five minutes on this side, give or take, and then, yeah, I will come right back to you. Uh, well, actually, I won't come right back to you. Uh, when, it, when I pull it out, when I pull it's done, I'm going to take it out and show uh, how it looks, whatever. Okay, so everything's done, and I am just about to do my uh, tasting, and I'm having it at the counter uh, for the light. Uh, so what I did was I turned the... Uh, the end of the fish that uh, the smaller end I kind of turned that towards the edge of the plate uh, uh, for presentation but if you want to and I guess if I want to do I would sit it down this way so it kind of presents itself out a little bit um, and it depends upon the, the cut of meat uh, maybe I want to kind of flippity flop this around this is a good uh, this is a really good, uh, it's got some marbling going on. You don't eat the fat, you cut away from the fat. Uh, but yeah, we got a good uh, medium going on with this uh, steak. And it's great. Uh, and uh, a good, basically braising in this uh, uh, sauce is great. And so it took about, it took about five to six minutes on each side. Per average and then I've topped it with blue cheese I love a good blue cheese flavor mm. okay so garnish is very simple there's some balsamic vinaigrette that I drizzled around the edge of the plate uh, uh, basically to work with the juices from the steak that are pouring out uh, a little bit and then I dropped some uh, rosemary just on this side uh, just for the heck of it okay so yeah uh, okay so enough of this BS I'm fixing to cut into it let me cut it and uh, I'll come back as I taste it and we'll talk. Okay, so with the ribeye, this is what I think of with a tender cut. I don't mind going a little bit uh, more on the uh, medium to medium rare side, but this is kind of like a medium for me. Um, if this were a denser cut of meat, uh, then, then I don't want this much juice coming out of it. So maybe a little bit medium, leaning towards the medium well. It'd be my favorite. But when it's a, the more tender it is, the more rare I can stand it. So let's see. Mm, that's very good. And you do wanna you do wanna get a bit of that blue cheese in there. For me, the flavor of a Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire, <laughs> I can't say it right. Worcestershire sauce, the Worcestershire sauce. Uh, and I'm, I know I'm butchering that, the name of that condiment with a blue cheese. They come, they, they, uh, there's a slight uh, balance between the saltiness and the blue cheese and uh, everything. So I know what we want to do is we want to get in here and get a good uh, taste uh, and a good look at what's going on with this. Uh, this is only going to look pretty for about uh, another uh, 10 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds. Let me turn it around. Get into it. No need for a knife on this. It's fish. 
small bites and uh, long chews will let your body know. And it got real, really well done on, on here. And you can use various white fish for this treatment if you're going to do fish. But let's get a little of that. And uh, see how that, uh, see how the um, cream cheese has been absorbed into the stuffing that has expanded. And that's counted for, and that's kind of pushed the fish away. So the uh, lesson for me to remember uh, is I can use uh, less stuffing in a fish like this or larger pieces of fish uh, to wrap around because it's going to expand. So to remember that, you know. Uh, yeah. Mm. Oh God, that is great, wonderful, creamy. That is everything. Um, I really, truly am going to end this video. It's just over 35 minutes. Uh, and I hope it went, I hope it all recorded very well. And I hope you're loving it. Uh, this video. Um, this is a very good uh, portion and everything in this portion, one fish, one piece of steak, this whole plate is very keto friendly and it's plenty food, plenty enough food for one meal. And then in a few hours, if you need some more, have some more, it's best to wait in between servings. Okay. I love you guys. Uh, love and light. Peace. Good night.